Go ahead, Teresa. Mike, at the halfway point, you get to look forward to five games now at home down the stretch, but the second half, what is going on? Uh, I think the numbers right now are like 90-something to, to, to 33 that you're being outscored in the second half. Nine points total in the fourth quarter. How, what's going on? To, to, there's three and outs. There's penalties. Uh, how do you try to fix that situation? Uh, so that, you know, like last night we see the offense doing well in the second quarter. And then it didn't, nothing's translating, it seems, after halftime. Yeah, we didn't take advantage. Um, I think specifically looking at it last night, we didn't take advantage of the field uh, position. And then, you know, the, the self-inflicted wounds, the unforced errors um, that we talked about, missed opportunities uh, to, to really play complimentary football. I'm going to try to, you know, really just show and, and, and review that second quarter uh, of everything that we would like to do and who we would like to be. You know, we've talked about this, to be able to move the ball, you know, you're gonna have to you know, convert some third downs, which we didn't, you have to hit some X plays, which we didn't uh, down the stretch. Those are things that haven't changed. That message hasn't changed in that explanation. So, um, you know, we have to be more consistent throughout the game, uh, finish the game off. Um, so, well, we'll get back to work and we'll focus on how we can do that against Denver. As you look at the the wide receiver group, Mike, uh, you know, I know there's not a lot of production last night. Was it more separation as, as you saw? You know, were there more opportunities that weren't taken advantage of, you know, to throw to them? What, what were some of your thoughts on that? Well, I think each game is, is you know, kind of its own, own deal. We had some opportunities last night. I thought that we did. Um, would like to have come down with, with some of those. Um, and, and then just really with – how we we're trying to manage the game and the game that we were in, um, you know, running the football and, and, and using some of those play passes. And, you know, Malik threw it down, you know, made some opportunities, took some chances down the field. Um, and we didn't come down with it, you know what I mean? So it's like we have to, uh, you know, continue to work to, to create some separation when we're getting matched, which, you know, we have been. And then, you know, being in good in zones or we're snapping down and, you know, the timing with the quarterback is there. but. You know, we'll we'll keep you know keep searching and keep trying to find ways to to help us score points most most importantly and and help us win. With the rushing attack in, in the second half, was it just a matter of down and distance that made you guys kind of get away from it, or what was it? Well, seven I mean, we, we tried to run the ball. I mean, there were times where we did. It's just when you get behind the sticks, um, you know, second and fifteen, you know, long yardage situations. Um, weren't you know weren't as efficient as we needed to be when we did run it um, and, and again just some of those those penalties and that that cost us you know where we would hit a first down we hit you know two x play uh, runs that were called back um, by the penalties that you know the flags that they threw I think uh, you know counting penalties I think the defense is on the field for a hundred plays I mean is that as high in numbers as you ever seen since and, since college yeah, yeah. defense play with great effort yeah they do. I think we all do you know and, and 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 we we can't just use effort as a you know it, it's a place to start but there's so many more details in all three phases that have to improve you know we're, we're going to go out there and we're going to fight and we're going to swing and we're going to we're going to try to compete uh, every opportunity that you know, we get I know that I'm positive that I've seen that but you have to to beat good teams. You have to have more than that. You know, you you have to have the details. You have to have the execution. Uh, you have to work together with somebody that's next to you. Um, so that's that's the focus moving forward. Is you know I think to to go and and you know obviously get a win this week or you know, compete against Denver. Uh, it, it starts with the effort. It starts with the finish, and that's who we are. But it also has to be about the details. And the technique and the, and the understanding of, of the play and making it work. Mike, Patrick's done it before with those scrambles in the late game situation. How much is that a great player making a great play versus things you guys did? I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think you know there were some times where we were um, not not as good as I would have liked or our, you know anybody would have liked in, in the in the rush coordination as we call it and. Um, you know, and then he's making a play, but you know, I think that that's probably some of that has got to be on us too. That's that that really, at the end of the day, not being able to 
to tackle him was was the deal. I'm sure he's a big part of it, but but Bud was a big part of, of bracketing him in, and losing him in the fourth quarter seemed to really be kind of a difference maker there for you. Um, yeah, I mean we you know we need everybody, you know we we redo, you know we we guys are all prepared, you know we, you know Mario gave us some some really good snaps, Demarcus gave us some really good snaps, so there's a lot of encouraging things there. You know, both of those guys kind of been looking for opportunities, and you know, I feel like they they did that. You know, Tier gave us you know some push. Um, so it just everybody has to be on the same page. Every you know, you know Danico continues to do that, and then we know about Jeff. But you know, we just all have to be on the same page. You know, whether it's Bud out there working with somebody or whoever it may be, uh, just making sure that we're on the same page and that. Um, you know, we don't have one guy coming under, one guy going over the top, and, and, and given those quarterbacks that there's so many of them in this league, we'll play another one this week that can, you know, get into a defense and, and break down a defense. And, you know, the DBs, you know, it's like plaster all week, plaster all week. The guy can throw it everywhere else. So they're, they're turning, and, you know, there you go. Their defense or their offense basically abandoned the run and just and threw the ball all night long. Once you guys shut down the run, was that kind of what you expected from them, that they would just adjust and go and throw throw it that much? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think so. I mean, you look and, <clears throat> you know, what their run game was, you know, coming into the game is, you know, you, we've, we've got some, I think, really good run defenders. I mean, I think guys, you know, when we set the edge and, and build a wall, David and um, Zach or Dylan or any of those guys are, are getting downhill and, and Jeff and Tier, I mean, it's tough sledding. So, um, you know, we have to we have to be ready for that. I mean, offensive coordinators, offensive coaches, they, they look and try to say, hey, what gives us the best chance to move the ball and potentially score points? And, you know, they probably at times look in there and say, well, that's that's not the best opportunity. You know, I mean, try to hand it off on an inside zone. We're, we're Jeff and Tier, they're sitting there, and Zach and David are coming in there, and guys are setting the edge. So, you know, we'll, we, we figured that we would be in a pass game and we'd have to make them earn it and tackle. And, you know, you're just hoping that you could tip some balls or maybe intercept some more, some opportunities to, to get some turnovers. And, and that didn't happen enough. Knock it out of the quarterback's hand. After seeing the film, how do you instruct Josh Kalu to defend Travis Kelsey? Well, I think it starts by, you know, you have to get your hands inside so that you're not forcing that official to, to make a decision. Even though coming into the game, I could tell him, you know, I mean, Travis is going to stalk block and, and throw the guy and, and run a route like he has for however many years Travis has been in the league. So, you know, the defender is entitled to the position. We talk about that, but, you know, other – when, when, when you get your hands outside, um, you, you force them to make a decision, and that's the decision that they went with. So, you know, obviously want to be physical, want to be square, but, you know, try, try to get your hands inside and <clears throat> hopefully not get hit in the face and get your helmet knocked off and everything else. But, you know, what are you going to do? With, the, with Malik, I know one of the concerns in the week one was kind of the hesitation at times on, on passes. Did you see any change, any any improvement in, in week two in that regard? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I thought that he was he was more decisive. I think there were some things that um, you know could have obviously been better, but you know I thought you know, he, even you know Chig. I thought he tried to flatten Chig out, and you know we just got to get Chig on the same page with Malik, and you know he threw it in a in a spot where it was going to be Chig or or nobody, you know on the on the on the over route. So. Um, you know, there were times where he was, you know, putting the ball where, where we wanted it. And, um, you know, we just have to be more consistent. You know, the the throw to hoop on the move, I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic throw. It's an unbelievable play. You talked about um, the effort where it starts. The foundation of your team always seems to be toughness, physicality. After what you've seen the last couple of weeks, how do you feel where your team is? Like, do you feel like you're in the elite group of teams in this league for – no, I'm not gonna. I, I you know, I'm not gonna. You know, I, where where we're at. You know, I'm not gonna like try to figure out if we're, you know, <clears throat> tougher or we're more physical than than somebody else. That gets determined on the field.
but we ran the football against a, you know, highly ranked run defense. Um, you know, we 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 didn't let them run the football, but but again, that probably that wasn't their plan. So, you know, mentally and physically, um, you, you have to have some some grit to you and some toughness, and and I think we do. But like I said, we just need to be better in the details and the um, the execution. Did you see improvement from Malik from one game to the next? And were there some things he could have done better uh, in the second half when when things weren't going well around him? Yeah, I mean, there's all yeah pr improvement, yes. And then you know, there's things that that all of us could have done to to be better. You know, you get you got to convert some third downs and you know be able to to stay on the football field and. You know, what I like is everybody's, you know, everybody's disappointed. Everybody knows the opportunity that we had, you know, offenses, you know, wishing that they would have been able to help the defense. But I didn't hear one time, and I can promise you I, I won't, about the defense having to go out there and, man, they can't get a first down. I mean, that's – I'm lucky that, that that doesn't happen. You know, it's just – it's easy to do. Human nature says – that you start pointing fingers or, hey, man, I don't want to be out here 100 plays. You guys aren't doing your job. And, you know, everybody, I believe this, is in it together. You know, I mean, again, I go back to the special team. You watch Hassan run down there, you know, stone the guy on the kickoff, and, and guys are jacked up and excited. And and that that stuff will always be important to me because I know it makes a difference. And along those lines, Derek, after the game, in the locker room, he shook every defender's hand and said, thank you for your effort. What does that say about the culture that you guys have? He's a team captain. He wants to win. He puts a lot into it. I've told you this. You guys all understand this. Um, Derek is always consistent with our message uh, and what we want to try to do each and every week. He's a great teammate. Um, you know, and he knows what, what, it, what we need to do to win, and that's to stick together and, and, and play complimentary football support one another and figure out ways to to win you know not sit in the corner with a couple guys and, and bitch and complain and it's about getting together with with a bunch of people and, and figuring out ways to win there was a time or two where malik was able to use a design run or the rpos to make some sizable gains did you just not get that look often enough to be able to use that set more well, we we used it there were some opportunities and then you know whether he gave it or not you know we'll look at the decisions and you know, had a keeper, and you know, we'll talk to him about pressing the line of scrimmage, and you know, had had probably Cody, and and again, these things are are new, and the speed is new, and you know, felt like he you know he could have continued to press the line of scrimmage, and you know, be able to progress to Cody. You know, he I just don't think he realized that he was still had four yards to to go for the line of scrimmage, and uh, we'll show him that to be able to to try to get a another gain and. You know, we'll continue to mix those things in. We'll talk to them about taking care of the ball. You know, the ball security is something that's that's critical when 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 quarterbacks or anybody runs with the football. So, uh, those are things that we'll continue to coach. And um, window for uh, Trentland this week. Or? Uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see how he's feeling. You know, he has worked extremely hard, um, and and to to stay in shape and condition, take care of his body lift um, mentally you know I think this is the just the best that he's been from a standpoint of handling a distraction which is something uh, different and, and sometimes new for for young players so I will say that that uh, you know whenever he's ready you know I, I'm, I'm excited for him to get back out there and we'll see where where that is this week um, because he's been in here, he's been on time, he's done everything that we've asked him to do, um, worked hard, and um, you know, we'll just have to see where he's at physically. Do you feel like Ron has made some, stri made some strides last yeah. week? Yeah, yeah, he has. He worked extremely hard to try to get into a position to play in a football game. I'll go through this with all the injuries. Can they reasonably do their job up to the expectations that we have? Can they protect themselves out there, and can they make it worse? So I wasn't able to answer all of those questions, you know, for, for him to be able to play in the game.
Mike, with 13 players on IR at this halfway point, to be atop the division and have a little bit of a cushion, uh, got to, it has to feel pretty good to at least be in this position rather than trying to have to claw your way back up the top? I don't think there's any real moral victories. You know, we talked about that last night. You know, we are where we are in, in the standings. You know, we have to focus on Denver. We have to focus on trying to get guys healthy. You know, get back late last night. You know, sleep and recovery. Uh, you know, guys that were banged up played a lot, and so that'll be the same thing this week. So, you know, we we aren't looking uh, at it like that. I'm certainly not. Like this is we have a we have a cushion. There, there's no room for cushions. In this league, it doesn't doesn't take a week off. Next, very good opponent, excellent defense. You know, looks like they're starting to get comfortable offensively, and it'll be a huge challenge. Along those lines, when you have a Sunday Thursday turnaround, do you change the schedule at all this week, or modify it all, thinking that you got two games in four days, or is it just strictly Broncos Sunday? Right? Well, it's Broncos Sunday, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much we'll be able to do, how much speed stuff we'll be able to do with just now. You know, guys are just now coming in for, for treatment. It's not like they came in, you know, we got off the plane. So see where everybody's at, get it, get a schedule together uh, that tries to help us prepare. And then uh, hopefully by Friday we can, you know, we, we can be going full speed and into the red zone and, and moving the field and all those things. And then we'll have a, Another schedule for, for a quick turnaround. Tough business. Frank lost his job today in Indianapolis. Any reaction to that? Well, I mean, I think Frank's an unbelievable football coach. I think he's an unbelievable man. I've gotten to know Frank well over the time that we've been in the division. Um, some of the committees that we've been on, you know, his wife, Linda. Um, you know, we all know what we sign up for. And, uh, you know, this is the other side of it that's probably not so, um, you know, it's difficult. You know, you never want to see anybody lose their job. And, uh, you know, they made a decision. But, you know, I'll, I'll try to, you know, reach out, obviously reached out to Frank and try to support him however I can.